Number 7. A 50 gram ball of copper has a net charge of 2 microcoulombs. What fraction of the copper's electrons has been removed? Alright, so first, how many electrons have been removed? Not what fraction yet, but how many? We start with the net charge, right? If, if this thing has a net charge of 2 microcoulombs, that basically tells us the number of not only excess protons, but then the number of electrons that were removed, right? So we can basically look at this, so it's 2 microcoulombs times then microcoulomb on the bottom. There's 10 to the 6 microcoulombs in 1 coulomb. And then we know that there are 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs of charge for every, just say, let's say, proton. All right. So we take 2 divided by now, 10 raised to the 6th, multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th. We get a value of about 1.25 times 10 to the 13th excess protons, okay? Excess protons. Well, how did we get those excess protons? Well, we could have removed that same number of electrons, right? Same number of electrons. So we removed, removed 1.25 times 10 to the 13 electrons, right? Think, think about this. Pretend you have an object. Pretend you have an object here, and within that object you have, let's just say, uh, four protons and four uh, electrons. If I remove one electron, choop, what's the net charge inside of here now? Don't tell me in terms of Coulomb, just tell me in terms of you know what excess number of protons or, or electrons. We have a net positive one charge, right? Because there's four protons and now only three electrons. So an excess positive charge was created by removing one electron, right? An excess positive one was created by removing a one electron. If I removed another electron, whoop, oh, whoop, oh, that whole thing came along. I don't know, how did that happen? That's weird. Okay, let's remove that one. Um, so if I remove two electrons now, I have a net two positive charge, right? And that I got a net two positive because I removed two electrons. So hopefully this now makes sense. Those numbers are a lot bigger. But that should begin to make sense. So, okay, so we, we know the number of removed, but now if we got to find the fraction, right? Um, so if we have to find the fraction now, we know we need the number then removed. So basically we're looking for this now. The, the answer, whoops, the answer will be this. Number of electrons removed divided then by the total number of electrons. Right, so we got to find this bottom piece. So now that's where this extra stuff kind of comes into uh, play. So we, so we know back to chemistry. So we know that there's a 50 gram uh, ball of copper. All right, so 50 grams, and if you remember, when you know the atomic mass, this basically tells you, right, the uh, grams per mole. All right, we could also do this. Yeah, I'm just going to do it that way. So we know the grams per mole. So this is going to be 63.5 grams per one mole of copper, and then we got to get we got to get it down to atoms of copper. So we need Avogadro's number, joy. So this is going to be one mole. Remember Avogadro's number one mole is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, right? Atoms. Since I'm talking about copper, all of this is just for copper. So this is going to be 50 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 63.5 and this is 4.74 so 4.74 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper okay now if I know the number of atoms of copper and they told us the that each atom has 29 protons can I find out the total number of protons there must have been sure right I do now one more step I just find that in each atom, so every one atom of copper contained 29 protons. So now when I do that, I just take the number and multiply it by 29. I'll now find the number of protons. So this is 1.37 times 10 to the 25th. 25th protons. Now, if this is the number of protons, right, and the let's just assume the copper was neutral to start. If this is the number of protons, then how many electrons must there have been if it was neutral? It would have been 1.37 
times 10 to the 25th, right? Electrons, it would have been the same number because it's neutral. The electrons have to match the proton. So now this is basically the number of electrons that we're starting with, okay? That's the total number that we had at the beginning, and then this amount was removed, right? So what fraction would be then removed? Well, we just do the division now. We go back to our formula over here. We plug in the numbers. 1.25 times 10 to the 13th electrons divided by then the total number, which was must have been 1.37 times 10 to the 25th. And we simply get our little fraction over here. So let me do the, um, oh, that is an exact value. Okay, great. I'll do the divide by the exact value. So here we're going to have about 9.09 .09 times 10 to the minus 13 uh, to 1. Okay, so that's the fraction. Eeny, peedy, weedy, weedy. Very tiny. All right, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.